What's up, everybody? Couch Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Valent video. And if I sound a little bit off, it's because allergies are just kicking my fucking ass. It's not because I'm depressed or I didn't get enough sleep or anything like that. So let's waste no more time and jump right into this gun's tier list. Kicking it off with the S tier, the top of the top, the best gun in the entire game, the Odin. No, I'm just kidding. It's not the Odin. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's the freaking phantom man now i know what you're gonna say but mills i freaking headshot like 20 people for 140 this week and the phantom freaking sucks well yeah i understand where you're going through but when we're talking about a gun that's versatile allowing you to spray wall banks spray through smoke easily fight people when they're pushing onto site for multiple angles and having the magazine size to support that type of play style the phantom really just succeeds in a lot of different situations that you're thrown in in valorant that being said, trailing just behind it is undoubtedly the Vandal. Vandal makes up for the lack of versatility with power level, being able to one-tap people in the head, which is definitely a satisfying feeling, and it allows you to take a lot further gunfights or duels. Now, something that the Vandal is going to be better at is challenging these long angles. So if you want to get into a lot of duels, or if you're a duelist player, then the Vandal might be your best bet. For example, holding an off angle with something like Jet Arena, getting that one tap with the Vandal, and then Wraithing or dashing away is something that is very specific to the Vandal and a lot harder to pull off on the Phantom. Now, I do see a common theme where people play with the Phantom, take a lot of long distance duels, die, and then they blame the gun when they're back of sight, they're a sentinel player, they shouldn't be taking these duels in the first place, they should be playing around their objective and their utility on sight rather than getting picked off early and taking challenges with Vandal users from really far away. Now, ultimately, you can be playing with both of these guns through different stages of the game or different scenarios. You're going to be rushing C on Haven with your team. Maybe your Vandal is what you want to do. Or maybe you're holding, ratting up on A on defense. The Phantom is going to allow you to play both sides of the back of sight very easily and allow you to spray through smokes as your teammates smoke off the choke points. Essentially, you can change up which gun you're using depending on the situation, and you can also climb to the highest ranks of the game one tricking either of these weapons, so it's not really that big of a deal, all said and done. Now, the next weapon we gotta talk about in the S tier is definitely the Classic Pistol. Still freaking insane. The Classic Pistol is actually so strong that when you buy another eco weapon, you have to legitimately ask yourself, Am I going to get more value on this weapon than the Classic Pistol? When you start talking about some of the more expensive eco weapon options, things like Stingers, you're like, hey, I could just pocket the money and, you know, I can rock this Classic Pistol, which is insane. It can one tap people, it can, you know, do damage while I'm jumping, and it's just so damn powerful. I mean, the Classic's amazing, and oftentimes, the classic is one of the best weapons that you could possibly have as a secondary you don't want to upgrade even if you had the money to do so so yeah classic pistol all the way for life now the last thing in the s tier is definitely the specter and the specter is just the most reliable gun you could possibly buy especially after you win that first pistol round the majority if not all of your team should just buy a specter it's almost guaranteed that you are gonna body pistol users with the specter with the large magazine size forgivable run and gun and the silencer there's a lot to like about the specter but when you have an entire team with the specter then you're just it's a slam dunk for that round and then going into the next round you can abuse what the specter is good at take up advantage fights run and gun and different things like that to basically abuse people that have better guns specifically phantoms and vandals and then you can partially upgrade as a team if you manage to win that round and then the rest of you can bonus so definitely very powerful gun and definitely something that everyone is playing with consistently now the next tier of weapons the a tier is just weapons that are extremely powerful not quite as standard as the s tier but still definitely in the meta and kicking it off with the top is the operator now the operator is not in the s tier because it's not something that you can expect to just get rolled by every single game the operator is limited to several things one it's basically primarily a jet weapon which is definitely something that makes the weapon more niche even if other characters can use it it's very specific situations and positions and honestly jet's still going to be able to do it better and two the operator is primarily a defensive weapon 
Not going to be used on offense all that much, especially not in the hands of Jet. So for these reasons, Operator, even when it's used and it's used in the right scenarios, it's super powerful. It's never going to be that weapon that is just like completely dominant unless the entire meta is centered around ops, which is just not right now. Now, the next in the A tier is actually the Marshall, a weapon that is up in stock because it's a potentially amazing weapon to win around that you really shouldn't be able to up against those Vandals and Phantoms. Because if you have the aim for it and you're challenging really long sightlines, as enemies take duels with their Vandals thinking they're safe on an eco round, you pop them right in the head with this Marshall and you get an upgrade for your team. Definitely incredibly powerful. And sometimes you'll have a team that like buys multiple specters or like four specters. And one person will buy that Marshall because they have it at a huge advantage already going into that second round if they lost that first round. But it's going to scale really well, especially on defense up against Vandals and Phantoms with that Marshall fighting long sightline, putting a lot of damage on the enemy, tagging them, and potentially getting some free kills as well. The next weapon that we got to talk about is definitely the Ghost Pistol. And the Ghost Pistol is like a love-hate relationship, right? Because when you're comparing it directly to the Classic Pistol, it does have some pros. It's more accurate, it generally. It has a bigger magazine, and it's silenced. And of course, it can headshot. It has more damage, right? But the problem with the Ghost Pistol is that 500 credits, you're paying a lot for what can actually amount to be a little bit. How many times have you bought a Ghost Pistol shot someone in the head they lived because they had armor and then they proceed to just right click you into oblivion with the classic pistol definitely has happened to a lot of you and honestly there are many people that are over buying the ghost pistol it's a weapon that is far better if you are going to be playing at that range rather than being someone that is going up and at the enemy because the classic is definitely comparable to that and the classic plus armor is probably going to be better than that especially if your character has mobility of any sort the ghost is probably not the gun for you but i do think that the ghost has a legitimate place for like two to three people in any composition for that first pistol round but after that the ghost isn't really played all that much and it shouldn't be and a lot of people are over buying the ghost where five people are buying it in that first pistol round when it's really not necessary for that comp now, the next weapon we got to talk about is the Sheriff. Sheriff is amazing, not for buying when you are using it for a gun round. We've went over that before where Shazam, like, blew up where he was freaking out about people buying the Sheriff in a gun round. It's a weapon that's supposed to be used for eco specifically. If the enemy has weapons and you have a little bit of extra money to buy something, but you're overall saving as a team, you buy the Sheriff. Because when enemies are playing and holding angles and holding common spots with rifles, the Sheriff can directly turn your counter strafing and your cross replacement into kills. And that's why it's amazing. It's a high risk, high reward weapon. And you definitely don't want to be using it when the rest of your team has rifles. That's absolutely awful. Speaking of which, the Game Leap website is the number one educational website online. So if you want to dominate this episode, then you got to go check it out right now. But let's get back to the video. Now, last up is definitely the Bulldog. Bulldog is just in a really sweet spot right now. It's an amazing gun. It's definitely way more powerful than the Spectre, and it's one of those guns that can fight with the rifles, especially if you aim a little bit better than them. And yeah, it's just a really good, really effective gun that is aggressively costed, and that's always amazing. Now, in the next section, we got to talk about weapons that are very strong, but they're a little bit niche in their execution, or there's very specific things they do really well. Kicking it off with the top of the B tier, the Odin and the Ares. Now, remember, a lot of these Radiantite boxes on sites, think of like B-Side Ascent, these are going to be wall bangable from every single position now, as opposed to not being the case before. This means that the power level of LMGs are definitely going to be higher because there's a lot more consistency in the wall banging aspect, and it's just overall a buff for these weapons. Now, these weapons are still going to be niche in their execution. You don't really want to buy the Odin when you can buy like a rifle at that time, unless you have a lot of extra money to spend because you are blowing quite a bit of money and you don't want to be in a situation where you're buying that Odin and you're sacrificing abilities or full armor or things like that. But there are going to be other situations where the Odin is going to be very effective at clearing a site. Like imagine if you're taking that Ascent B and you're a one person, let's say you're a Sova, right? Your team gets ready to push, you try to recon arrow in, you wall bang like many cubbies and you just identify what's clear. That can be really good. Now, the Ares is an interesting one because the problem with the Ares is it directly competes with the Spectre, which the Spectre is going to be far more reliable. But if you're holding a place like Garage where you could get wall bang value on defense or even playing it on attack, trying to flush that area out, 
Or you're trying to set up a Haven B push where you plant and someone takes control of A shore and wall banks through the wall at the plant zone. These are scenarios where the areas can get extra value, but in general, the Spectre is just a little bit better for the price point and it's going to be a little bit more reliable. Doesn't mean you can't whip out the areas to surprise enemies or punish enemies for like holding short in garage or things like that. Now, next up, we got to talk about the Frenzy. Frenzy is good. It's legitimately good. It's at a decent price point. The biggest problem with the Frenzy is the fact that, one, you can't buy that light armor with the Frenzy, and when you think about the Frenzy, you really want to be able to survive the transition between where you set up to getting on top of an enemy, right, swinging that enemy, and the second problem with the Frenzy is you don't have enough ammo a lot of times to take on multiple targets. A lot of times you have to play around cover to get a kill and then back off, reload so enemies can't pursue you and then turn and get another kill. That's kind of how you want to operate with the Frenzy. Doesn't always work the way you envision and in many ways getting that classic plus armor is going to be more guaranteed if you are a better player. The classic is definitely going to be a little bit of a harder weapon to use. The frenzy is more free guaranteed kills, but I also think it could end up being a little bit of a crutch if you rely on the frenzy too much in that pistol round. Now, the last weapon in the B tier is the guardian, and a lot of people are like, hey, you're underrating the guardian, man. It should be an A tier. Well, the big problem with the guardian is it's not versatile. I say that word a lot, but what I mean is it's very specific in the scenarios it's good in. If enemies are peeking you from long ranges, you can fight them with the guardian, but if an enemy swings you from close, you're absolutely fucked. If you need to take a point with the Guardian, you're absolutely fucked. It's very poor at retaking. It's very poor at taking space. It's good at holding areas. And that's why when compared in the direct head-to-head, -head, while yes, it has the a most amazing first shot accuracy possible, the Bulldog is going to be that more effective weapon in a lot more scenarios for a very similar cost. So you got to set up the scenarios where the Guardian is good. And it's going to be a lot better if you're like challenging attacks taxi long or Holding defense on split on a site from the really far angle. Like these are the scenarios where the Guardian is gonna shine and you could technically be put in a scenario where the Guardian is bad if the enemy pushed the other site. Now they plan down, now you have to retake with the Guardian. Definitely could be bad. A lot worse than having something like a Bulldog, for instance. Now next up is the C tier. These are weapons that are good, but they are extremely niche in the way that you use them. And you really got to rely on catching enemies off guard to get the maximum amount of value with them. So the first one is the Stinger. Stinger's okay. The first problem is it has competition. Just having a classic pistol with armor is really freaking good for cheap. And it might be just better than the Stinger in some situations. Now, the great part about a Stinger is if you end up on top of someone, it's basically a free kill, right? Because you can run and gun and just annihilate them. But there's a, not a lot of characters that could set up that sort of exchange. Like, you need to have mobility to get at someone to make the Stinger the most effective. And it's time to kill is a little bit slow for, like, holding a really close angle. Someone walks into you. If they peek it with intent, they can headshot you instantly. And you're not going to be able to get them by surprise fast enough to kill them. So the Stinger's okay. It's just a gun that is still kind of reeling from its big nerf a while back. And then the last thing in the C tier is the Judge. The Judge is a weapon that is going to be good if the enemies are not playing around it. It's going to be amazing if you catch them by surprise. But it's not a weapon you're going to be playing with every round. And there can be really big problems with the weapon like holding a sight and then the enemy push the other way. And now you have to retake with the Judge, which is like the same situation with the Guardian. It can be pretty awful in that situation. It's like a high risk, high reward, right? But if you buy something like the Bulldog or the Spectre, it's more reliable for a multitude of different situations. That's very important. It's like, whatever happens, you're still gonna be good. It's not like I'm playing for a gamble here to get all or nothing. That's the difference. Now, the last thing we gotta talk about is the F tier. And you might disagree with me here, but both these shoddies are just not that great. The Shorty and the Bucky. The Bucky has been hit pretty hard, and yeah, sure, you could still pump someone right in the face, but the majority of the time, the high-risk, high-reward nature of that judge, where if enemies don't check you and they push your point, you're gonna get like three kills, and if they push the other side, now you're screwed because you have to retake with it. The Bucky, if you get pushed by three people, you're gonna get one kill, and you're gonna die, and that's your entire reward, and you're still going to suck in a retake scenario. Not the greatest thing ever, if I'm being honest. And without that right click being incredibly consistent like it used to be, the Bucky is in a pretty sad state right now. Now, the Shorty is bad because compared to the Classic Pistol. I mean, I compare everything to the Classic Pistol. Classic Pistol is too damn strong. It's a free weapon. It's like the mold that things have to line up to. Why are you paying 200 for the Shorty? Like, 
The classic should cost 200 and the shorty should be free because the shorty sucks. <laughs> I mean, it's only going to work if enemies are completely caught off guard. Don't check you. You might be able to get one person, maybe two if you're like a god and you just stuff them right in the chest. But realistically, that's not going to work. And the gun is just not very good, honestly. A sorry you shot he uses, but yeah, find a new main gun. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go to the Game Leap website if you want more in-depth advanced tips over all these weapons so that you can master them as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed the video. I love your faces, and I'll see you next time.